Hello, boys and girls. This is Miss Kim. Today, we're going to read a new book called About Trees. After reading this book, we're going to use the details from the book to help us answer the question: How do trees help us? We are also going to use what we find in the text to draw a picture or sketch of a tree and label different parts. I will help you go through the lesson and answer these questions and read the book and understand. Now, before we start the lesson, I have to tell you one thing: that is, the new book about trees is different from the other books that we read so far. I will tell you what that difference is. The book that we are reading today is a, called About Trees. This book is different from the other books you've read because it is a nonfiction book. Nonfiction books are special because they're not stories. Nonfiction books teach us about something. Nonfiction books have many facts or true information. They also have different parts or features to help us find the information and understand. So our book about trees will teach us about trees. One of the important feature or a part of a nonfiction book is called table of contents. Table of contents is found in the beginning of a nonfiction book. It is a list of different topics that you can find in the book, and it tells us the page numbers to find the, these different topics. For example, if I want to learn about leaves, I can go to page five to find them. If I want to learn about roots, I can go to page ten. If you look at the bottom. Our table of contents ends with glossary and index, which you can find on page sixteen. This is another important feature in a nonfiction book. The last feature of an, a nonfiction book is glossary and index. Glossary and index are found at the end of a nonfiction book. Glossary. It's a list of important words and their meanings to help you understand the book. For example, if you came across the word chlorophyll in your book and you want to know what it means, you will come to the glossary and look at the definition. It says chlorophyll is a material in green plants that can turn water, air, and sunlight into food. Index is another list that has topics you can find in the book and the page numbers. For example, if you want to find where chlorophyll is mentioned, you will see an index on page five and six. You will find this topic. Remember, as we start the lesson, that our objective. Is to use the details from the book to answer the question, "How do trees help us?" And we will need information to help us sketch a tree and label parts of that tree. Listen very carefully as we start the lesson. Hello, kindergartners. Today, our learning target is. I can use the text to describe details about things trees do for us. Now you read it with me. I can use the text to describe details about things trees do for us. Today you will use the text about trees to think and talk about what trees do for us. You will need about trees the book. You're enjoying trees journal for this lesson, and a pencil. Let's read the book about trees. 
About Trees, written by Sherry Sterling. Before we read, let's preview the table of contents. First, the book will start out with an introduction. Then we will read about leaves, branches, trunk, roots, sap, seeds, growing, and then the book will end with a conclusion and the glossary and index. Introduction. Trees are the tallest living plants. Redwood trees can grow as tall as a 30-story building. Giant sequoias can weigh as much as 3,000 large pickup trucks, making them one of the heaviest living things. Trees also live a long time. Many trees alive today were full grown long before the United States became a country. But these massive trees share something with all plants. They make their own food. People look tiny when standing next to giant sequoias. Leaves. Imagine being able to make your own food without cooking or even going to a restaurant. Leaves make food for trees by changing energy from sunlight into food. This important work is done by chlorophyll, the green coloring in leaves. Leaves come in all shapes and sizes. Most deciduous trees have wide, thin leaves, while most conifers have needle-like leaves. Conifers keep their needles through all seasons. Only the oldest needles fall to the ground. Deciduous trees lose their leaves every fall. Here is some deciduous tree leaves and the tree and conifer needles and a conifer tree. In the fall, the leaves of deciduous trees show their true colors. These true colors are yellows, oranges, and browns, which hide under green chlorophyll all spring and summer. We see these colors in the fall after leaves stop making chlorophyll. Yellow and brown leaves fall from this deciduous tree. Branches. Branches are the arms that hold up a tree's leaves. Branches spread leaves out to get as much sunlight as they can. The leaves give shade to other living things on sunny days. Branches start out as twigs, then they grow thicker each year. As a tree grows, its bark cracks open so the branches and trunk can expand. New bark is always growing under the old, ready to protect the tree. If new bark gets stripped away, a tree can die. This photograph of a tree has labels, branch, trunk, twigs, leaves, and roots. Trunk. Tubes in the tree's trunk carries water from the roots up to the leaves. They also carry sap or food down from the leaves to the roots. These tubes are like highways carrying traffic back and forth. They are close to the outside of the tree just under the bark. Layers of bark protect trees. That's shown in this photograph. A tree doesn't need the middle of its trunk to live. The middle is made of rings of old growth, not active highways. That's why a tree can keep growing even if the middle is hollowed out after a lightning strike. All it needs is enough bark to protect its highways. And here is a tree trunk cut and shown to you sideways. So here is the active highways, the old growth in the middle and the bark on the outside. And here is a diagram showing how the water flows up the tree from the roots and sap comes down the trees. Roots. Trees need soil to keep growing. Roots are part of the highways. They soak up water and nutrients from the soil. Roots also keep the soil in place when it rains. Without the roots of trees and plants, soil washes away. Trees are stuck in the soil because their roots reach deep into the ground. It's a good thing they can make their own food since they can't move to get it. And now this caption show, or tells us this picture 
has tree roots that reach deep into the ground. Sap. Leaves use water plus sunlight and air to make food for the tree. This food is in the form of liquid sugars. Sometimes people eat some kinds of tree sugars for food. You've probably had tree sugar for breakfast, pouring it over your pancakes or waffles. Have you guessed what tree sugar this is? It's maple syrup, and it comes from the food or sap of a sugar maple tree. A bucket collects sap from a tap in a maple tree in this photograph. And then here, pancakes swim in maple syrup. Seeds. Deciduous trees grow flowers, which make seeds that are inside fruits or nuts. Conifers make cones instead of flowers. The cones do the same job for conifers that flowers do on other trees. They make seeds to grow more trees. Each seed holds its own supply of food to keep it alive until it's ready to sprout. Here are some pine nuts and a pine cone, an acorn, apple blossoms, and an apple fruit with apple seeds. Growing. How does a tall tree grow from a small seed? The seed soaks up water until it can send out a root. With more water, leaves inside the seed case grow until they push up and out. Once this has happened, we say the seed has sprouted. Now the sprout can make its own food and no longer needs the seed's store of energy. The seed leaves will make food for the new sprout. This shows how a sprout grows from a seed. Here's the seed case, the roots, and the seed leaves. Conclusion. While trees look like they aren't doing much, they are working. They make their own food by changing sunlight and air into sugars. This helps keep the air clean too. Trees are home and food for birds and other animals. Look to see which animals make homes in trees near your home. Some animals, including humans, eat sap, fruit, and seeds from trees. Others eat bark and leaves. This picture shows holes in trees make safe homes for many owls. Trees do many things. Tree leaves shade us on sunny days. They also shade new sprouts from the heat of the sun so they won't burn. Tree roots hold the soil in place that trees and other plants need to grow. From saplings to mighty giants, trees stand tall. Now that we have read the book, let's think about it. What are some things trees do for us? Did you like learning about trees? Now that we finish our book, we're going to answer the question. How do trees help us or what do trees do for us? I want you to think about this question and think about what you learned about trees from the book about trees. I have a sentence frame above that says trees help us by. We're going to use this sentence frame to answer. I'll give you an example. How do trees help us or what do trees do for us? Hmm. I know on page seven of our book, it said the leaves give shade to other living things on sunny days. Huh. This information tells me that trees help us by giving shade to living things. Look at these boys. They're reading books under the tree because the tree gives them shade and cools them off in a sunny day. Now, it's your turn. I want you to pause my video and think about how do trees help us or what do trees do for us. You can use the sentence frame to help you. You can also use the pictures to help you answer this question. Remember, 
we're trying to find the details from the book we've read about trees. So if you need help, go back to the book and find the information like I found my information from the book. Now that you talked about your uh, answer for the question, how do trees help us? We're going to move on to our writing portion of the lesson. Today, we're going to write about tree. We're going to sketch a tree part and label it. Try to write a sentence about your tree part too. There were many different parts of in a tree. You can look at all of them by looking at your table of contents. Or you can look at page seven of the book, which has a diagram of a tree which, with labels. Remember to sketch it in your sketch journal, label your picture, and write a sentence. Once you're done, Share your writing with a family member or a friend when you finish. Thank you for listening to our lesson. See you next time.